So um, I'm going to try this today, even though I think maybe my reeds are not ready for me to try this. But um, it'll at least give me a chance to talk a little bit about reeds and how they can kind of be finicky. Um, I'm using two and a half uh, size reeds, the Van Dorans. Um, and um, I, I usually try, you know, I'm a, basically a beginning clarinet player. I'm not that good. Um, but um, I try to um, keep two reeds going at a time because um, often reeds are inconsistent from uh, one to the next. They can be in the same box and two reeds can sound totally different from each other. Um, so I, I keep two of them kind of on a rotation um, and I switch back and forth between them. Uh, I normally mark them and I've got one of them still with its mark mostly there. Uh, there's a one on this. You can kind of barely see it. My two is already rubbed off on this one. I didn't use the pen I normally use, but this is my number two read. Um, I'm not really sure which one I'm going to go with yet because, like I say, they're both brand new. Um, when I was picking up my reeds, I did not pick up the two reeds that I've been using. So uh, they're probably at the school um, sitting there, and I don't get to go back to the school, at least not for a while, so or not to go inside anyway. So I'm going to try these two. They're brand new today. Um, that's not recommended, you know. I mean, you, b before reeds are going to sound good, you're going to use them at least a few times, and they'll get kind of broken in a little bit. So these are still getting broken in. Um, but I'm going to try them out. I did want to use that as kind of an offer, an explanation for it. Um, this is my number two read. I'm going to just see what it sounds like, you know. Um, just so you know, uh, the way I like to do it is keep them in a cup with some water. And I've got it sort of sitting in there soaking. I've been uh, going back and forth and I'll put one on the clarinet and then um, switch it up and put the other one on and play it and play it and play it and just go back and forth um, until I'm happy with one. And I'm not happy with either one, to be honest, so I may end up redoing this video. But, um, but this is worth talking about because it's the th I think it's one of those things that clarinet players have to go through. Um, so what I'm going to be playing... Um, oh, uh, yeah, I was talking about reeds, my two different reeds. So this is my number two read. I want to go up my five notes. We're doing a five-note scale, so I'm just going to play up each note and see what it sounds like. <laughs> bit airy a little bit more muffled than I would prefer but again there it's not broken in it's not squeaking or anything so that's that's good um, I think my first read is probably gonna maybe do a little better for me so I'm gonna switch it out here um, one quick note about uh, putting your read because this is a beginning band um, video so you're probably fairly new at this um, when you put them on you know, you just want to be really careful about how you put them on. I always take my ligature, sort of move it up a little bit because, you know, the mouthpiece is more narrow at the top than at the bottom. So you can move it up and then you put it, your flat side of the reed on the flat side of the mouthpiece um, very carefully. You have to be super careful with reeds because they're so thin and they're so brittle that, you know, if you get the slightest, slightest little crack or, um, you know, chip out of the reed, um, then we give it the wall test. And we take that read. I, I say, oh, let me give, I see my students read. And I say, give me that read. Let me see. I see a little chip in it, you know. Um, usually that, that read is not going to sound good, no matter who's playing it. Even a good player may have a hard time getting a good sound. So I'll say, let me, let's give that read the wall test. And I'll just jam it into the wall. Because you don't want them even getting used to using bad reads. But I also keep a supply of reads. Because I don't want to just kill their read and, you know, completely. And have them not have anything to play on. So... Uh, and then I'll give them a read or I'll, um, if they have a dollar to donate, um, that's always nice too. Um, reads probably cost closer to $2 each, but you know, you do what you got to do, right? Classroom teachers are buying Kleenex boxes and markers and all kinds of stuff for their students. We have to buy reads and things like that, right? So public school, hey, hey. love it, but you got to do some extra things sometimes, right? So this is my number one read. Um, when you put it on, you want to make sure, um, you know, I, I take the, the ligature when it's loose. Um, and I kind of, once I get the read in a good spot where I think it, 
is perfectly lined up with the top of the mouthpiece and um, I, I don't want to push down on it like that so I, I pull the ligature up and then I kind of eyeball it as best I can get it perfectly centered perfectly squared and then pull the ligature down in place and once it's sort of right there at the top um, then I go ahead and tighten it up. It's not quite there yet. I'm going to move this up a tiny bit. Sometimes your ligat or your reed placement could also give you some sound issues. Um, and you want to get a good, nice, full sound. Um, so you want to make sure that it's placed correctly and doesn't sound muffled or anything like that. So I think I've got it pretty well placed. I don't know. Some pros might be out there going no I don't like that placement very much but I'm not a pro so I'm gonna do my best with this see what my number one read sounds like really opens up on that G for some reason so um, I'm gonna go ahead and try this with the number one read. I think that one's a little bit more ready. So um, uh, let's see, this exercise is one of our warm-ups that we do. It's the main warm-up we do. Um, and um, the good thing about this exercise is you can add in notes to it. It doesn't have to be five notes long. But um, uh, let's see, so we start um, uh, on our bottom note. We move up, we do whole notes first scale and holes, excuse me, <clears throat> I'll hopefully have the music scrolling on one side or the other, um, or just up there, maybe I'm pointing to it or something. Um, and let's see, then it goes to half notes, there'll be a measure rest in between, half notes next, quarter notes, and then we'll do like a two per tone, T T T T T T T T. And um, when we do that, of course, our, our tongue is touching the, the tip of the reed um, to start the sound for every single note we play. Um, and let's see, what's the last thing? Oh yeah, the count off will be, there's two measures of click. On the second measure of click, I will give a one, two, ready, go, and we'll play it together, okay? So, um, I'll try to keep my hand in position so you can see um, what my fingers are doing. I think I'm gonna turn to the side here so you can see my thumb as well. Um, I always talk about hand position. You probably did this a lot with recorder um, in fourth grade or whatever grade you played recorder in. Um, is working on like keeping your finger, your wrist sort of down a little bit so that your fingers are coming in perpendicular geometry. We like to um, cross curriculum there. Um, perpendicular, which means coming in directly from the side, not diagonally like this, because your fingers are not, you know, shaped in a way that, that you can cover all the holes. So we hopefully have learned that on our recorders. Um, left hand is always on top. This is my left hand, right? Um, I always try to show my students like this before I start playing and then, you know, remind them that I'm not mirror image of them and stuff. Um, so I'm going to try this, um, see how it goes, and then I'll re-record it, obviously, if it doesn't sound good, but we'll see. Um, you keep your fingers crossed. All right, here we go. Let's try this together. And one, two, ready? <laughs> things that I thought of while I was playing that are just sort of beginner technique type things uh, and not technique necessarily but also um, you know like why is this happening type type of things um, I noticed because I'm not a clarinet player or a reed instrument player that I get tired here a little bit faster than I would if I practice this every single day um, which is what you should be doing you should be practicing often 
um, then you build up the strength a little bit better. And um, if you ever notice that wobbly sort of sound um, when you're getting tired, basically. So um, it's important that your aperture be set very, very firmly and stay in place. It doesn't need to move around. Uh, you probably notice a stopped and did a little um, stretch uh, after the first song because it's long, you know, playing a lot of long notes. Um, so I wanted to just stretch out a little bit. So we'll, we would normally take more time and band uh, in between things than this. Um, and so you feel free to, you know, stop the video in between when you moving to the half notes and the quarter notes and whatnot. Um, but also, um, you know, be patient with yourself. Practice every day. Um, and that, that wobbly sound will start to go away. Um, I didn't get it too badly just now when I was playing, but it does happen. Uh, I was noticing it earlier, so um, I was glad to sort of get through. Um, let's see, there was something else too. Um, oh yeah, just the, the general shape of your mouth. I forgot to go over at the beginning, so I'll do that now. Um, is that, you know, you want to have your lower lip tucked or sort of uh, uh, wrapped around your lower teeth. Um, and then that's going to go right here on the reed itself while your upper teeth are actually on the top of your uh, mouthpiece right over here. Um, uh, you don't want to apply too much pressure uh, in a chewing way because, um, you know, we're naturally strong that way. We all chew and talk and things, right? So our muscles are naturally strong there. They're not always as strong sideways. And the whole idea of getting... Um, your mouth around the mouthpiece is that you sort of like a drawstring on a hoodie when you close it off It goes down to this little tiny hole like Kenny on South Park, right? Um, uh, but you want to have equal pressure and so because we're not as strong here It's important to concentrate on that part more um, And that is where you will um, start to you know build your muscles up um, And don't push so much on to the reed itself. Don't bite the reed because that will definitely cause it to squeak um, if you're hearing a lot of squeaks, it can be a stiff reed, it could be a, a cracked reed or something, um, you know, wrong with the reed itself. Um, sometimes you just get a dud of a reed, and, and that's why I like to have at least two uh, working at any given time so that I can kind of go back and forth and compare them and just pick the one that's working better um, when it's needed. Um, and then you can just practice on reeds that maybe are a little more muffled sounding and just understand that, that, that they're not quite as good of a reed. Um, and then when you get older and more professional, you know, you're more consistent here, um, you can really lock in on which type of read works the best for you and is most consistent when you're uh, playing. All right, guys, uh, good luck. Practice hard. Practice makes permanent. Bye.